Welcome to DICTA, your weekly dose of law school and bar exam info. I'm Carrie Ann. And I'm Puyan, and we're the co-founders of Vinco. So, to be honest, I don't really know why we're here today. <laughs> Carrie Ann <laughs> told me we need to shoot a video and that it's a secret. So, it's, please, enlighten us. It's, it's top secret. It, I'm not actually sure if I should share with you or anyone else. But uh, by the way, I literally have no idea what this is about. <laughs> uh, this isn't like scripted. I have no idea. I told Puyan that I wanted to share the top secret to being a law student, to not just being a law student, to being the most successful law student that you can be. And I didn't trust him with the information before video day. I would have leaked it. Yeah, he's, you know, a little bit of a chatterbox. So... The secret to succeeding in law school all circles around the word self. It is all about you and what you do as a law student. And I really think there are three components to this. It's about being self-motivated, having the ability to perform self-evaluations, and having the ability to conduct self-regulated learning, which I will explain. But Question. Already? How do I become motivated? <laughs> so, where are you in your law school career? Well, I, I graduated. <laughs> ah, oh, so you want to know how to become motivated as a lawyer? Yeah. That's outside of my um, area of expertise. Okay, well, when I was, <laughs> I, I was a pretty unmotivated law student. Um, any tips on how I could have fixed that? So, this is something that I deal with all the time, particularly with the students who I teach at the law school where I work. It is just this lack of motivation to make changes right. in the way that they're studying and to make changes to the way that they learn, really. And this can also involve them making changes in their personal life if that's impacting what yeah. is going on with their studying. So this has to come from a place of really wanting to make it wanting to cross the finish line to graduation, cross the finish line of the bar exam. And everyone wants it, but it's about how bad do you want it and yeah. what are you willing to do to make it happen. Exactly. So I find that I, if students can focus on the bigger picture a little bit more, that motivation can come a little more easily. So Really? Why did you go to law school? Uh, to become a lawyer. Really, you're really making this easy for me okay. today. Okay, I went to you? law school <laughs> to become a criminal defense attorney. Okay. Because I thought that there's underrepresented segments of the community, I mean, who get public defenders, but that I felt like I could offer more to some people and, and I could improve their lives. Okay, so there was something underlying your want to go yeah. to law school. Mm -hmm. And... That can be a powerful thing if you can harness it for the purposes of motivation. So I came to law school, which we've heard on other videos, to be a prosecutor, which is not at all anything close to what, what we do now. But that drove me all through law school, having that end goal of, well, it's not about graduating law school, or even dial it back further than that. It's not about passing a test or doing well on a law school test. It's not about graduating law school. It's not about passing the bar exam. It's about being a lawyer to make the difference that I wanted to make. Yeah, but like getting through one day, so you wake up, you have all these classes, you have a study group, and you have just some some goals you want to accomplish for that day. It's very far attenuated from your ultimate goal two years down the road of getting a prestigious job or whatever your goal may be. So I found it a little difficult without short-term gratification. And I mean, because I'm kind of an impulsive person. Yeah, so there are other ways to build in motivation, like uh, like a self-reward system or having accountability partner with another yeah, law student. There's, that's there's, true. there's other things to do, but you can't, this was my big tip because people get really wrapped up in that day-to-day -day stuff and it's just about putting one foot in front of the other instead of coming to this realization that it's not really even about you. It's about the difference that you yeah. want to make. Or even if it is just about you, even if you came to law school because you thought all lawyers are filthy rich, which they're not, but even if that was the reason, whatever it is that was motivating you to start this journey, it gets lost on most people. Yeah, So definitely. finding a way to come back to that, even if it's something as small as putting it on a sticky note somewhere you see it every day, can just help you keep moving forward. And Puyan's certainly right that there has to be 
short-term motivation as well and like I said setting up some sort of reward system for me it was a manicure every Friday afternoon that was what I did I didn't have classes on Friday afternoons all through law school three o'clock went to see my favorite nail lady it was eight bucks and it was but I could only do it if I stayed focused and motivated and did what I needed to do through the week that was you know not a huge thing but something that gave me that more okay. short-term gratification. I had my three-hour Netflix binge at the end of the night if I accomplished all my goals. Right. But to be honest, I would pretty much do it whether or not I accomplished my goals, yeah. which, which is a problem. Right. You have to be able to sort of you know, self-regulate what you're doing, but that's where having some sort of accountability yeah. person, whether Definitely. it's another student, whether it's a mentor, a professor, a significant other, a family member, this could be anyone who's just not afraid to get up in your face a little bit and say, what are you doing with your life, you know? Yeah. And some people are motivated by the hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans they're gonna have hanging over their heads. Um, so you wanna get through it and you wanna get through it in at the top of your class and at the bottom of your class because yeah. that could I mean, affect I mean, things. the flip side of that though is some people are just really turned off by that idea. They're, they just go into despair because of all the loans. I mean, it's... Yeah. It, it can become overwhelming. I'm just I'm just pointing out the flip side to that. Yeah, no, I mean, I I am a person who graduated with student loan debt and not an insignificant amount of it. Right, so same. I know how real that situation is. But I mean, if anything, it motivates me more now that I'm out of law school to stay on top of my different jobs and make sure that I'm exactly. you know moving forward with my career for that purpose. But also, I did have somewhere in the back of my head. Um, when I was having days where I just was like, I'd rather be watching Law and Order SVU, <laughs> that it was, well, what are you going to do with this, you know, 100K plus degree here if you, if you can't even get through? So obviously yeah. there's no one right answer. You know, he wants to shoot down all my tips. He just asked me for some advice. But you have to find, you have to find that self-motivation. And these are, these kinds of tips work for the majority of my students. Maybe you have kids and they're your motivation and that you want them to be proud of you and seeing you complete this, um, seeing you complete this really hard task in your life. So you, there's, there's tons of different ways to derive this motivation, but if you don't have it and you can't find it, you're not going to be successful in law school. I would just like to add one thing that helped me a little bit with my self-motivation, and that was, as cliche as it's going to sound, exercise. Really helped. It helped shape... I mean, it improved my mood, Yeah. it improved my motivation, it made me think I was doing things that were good for me, and it just, I was just happier. And when I was happier, I was more motivated, and your mind and body are really linked that way. So if you need to make a change and you're not exercising, that might be a decent place to start. I have nothing to add on that, because I'm pretty infamously known for not exactly exercising on a regular basis. Carry on his movement adverse. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even disagree with that statement. So let's just move on. Let's just move on from that. So the second part of this, like I said, is self-evaluation. So that's really, it's not only saying, okay, I'm motivated, I'm going home, I'm going to do it. It's then about actually saying, well, did I do it? Am I doing it? That's the part where you don't get to watch the yeah. Netflix if you didn't yeah. do what you were exactly. you said you were going to do. So it's about being it's about honest self-reflection in And it's hard. It's really, it's really hard. hard. It's really I hard. I still don't do it honestly. And I've been practicing for like about a year and a half now in a different context I mean, but still. It's I still don't do it to the point where sometimes I add things to my to-do list that I've already done so I can cross them off so it feels like I did more, right? Okay, but like the games that we play with ourselves, the, the point here is no one's immune yeah, from this exactly. and we're not harping on you for struggling with it because everyone struggles with it, but... You have to find ways to manipulate yourself <laughs> to get yourself to do it. I mean, creating systems and routines, it's... Yeah, and I think there's two parts to this in terms of the self-evaluation. It's it's evaluating what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and then also evaluating any feedback that you're receiving from your professors. Yeah, um, which might be Right, which, yeah. which might be few and far between in law school, right? So you have to be mm -hmm. proactive in getting that feedback if your professors are said they're willing to look at practice exams or, or anything like that, or the academic support staff at your school. But then it's looking at what they have to say and honestly saying, I see room for me to improve and this is my plan for doing so.
So it's, it's twofold. It's both in your personal life and how you're managing your study uh, plan, evaluating that, and then actually being able to evaluate your work, which segues into the idea of you know, this self-regulated learning, which is just sort of a, a fancy term for being responsible for your own learning, for your own education, and being your own barometer for where are you. Definitely. <laughs> right? And this is... So how do you do that? This is the number one struggle I see with my students, is this lack of awareness of what they actually need to do to be successful. And it's, it's that you open your ears and eyes to the feedback that you're being given. And if you don't have enough, you go seek it out. Yeah, I mean, I have very little to add with regard to self-regulated learning. I mean, I'm I'm just learning how to do it now as an attorney. I mean, I, th I think I first learned how to do it during the bar exam because there was so much pressure and I really did not want to fail and that was haunting me. So I just created a plan and I would self-evaluate at the end of each day, I would spend 15 minutes evaluating, was it a positive day, negative day, why, what could I do differently? And I tried to regulate my learning for the following day. Yeah, it's really it's really hard and I think this ties into also sort of somewhat of a generational thing, right? So millennials, which we are, have kind of a bad rap, right? We, we have this... Um, everything was given to us. Right, we have this the, these notions of um, instant gratification, of that we're entitled to yeah. things, we have short attention spans, we do all of our Googling, for re we do all of our research on Google, so it's like, but but also that those are excuses that yes, people use, exactly. right? So as both a millennial and an attorney and someone who works and mentors other millennials, these are excuses, not reasons to um, let everything pile up and get you down and not be successful. So from what I can see, and this is from working with hundreds of students and even recognizing this in my own friends when I was a law student myself, is you cannot be successful in law school without accepting responsibility for your education and being willing to make changes oh, when this, it's necessary. This is huge. I remember I was creating uh, study groups and I switched study groups like three times. And the reason was because people, the people who I initially was studying with, whenever they did poorly on an assignment or something... It was someone else's fault. It was never their yeah. own <laughs> fault. And and whenever I did something wrong or or got a, a mark that was lower than what I had hoped for, I immediately thought, what can I do differently to improve this? Right. And I realized our mindsets are completely different. I need to associate with people who are who are of my mindset or of a better mindset so that yeah. I can learn from them. You need to surround yourself with people who are better than you. Yeah. Or that's what I wanted to do anyway so I could improve. I mean, and that's why I graduated with honors and passed the bar exam on this first try. Like, honestly, that is this single attribute. I, everything else that you did would not have been possible without that mindset. So... This is like your weekly dose of tough love today, but yeah. if you find yourself playing the blame game and and it was my professor's fault or this thing happened and that screwed me up, you need to really do some um, reflection on yeah. on how you can change that. And if that means that you need to go get help, if you need to see someone at the law school to help you with that, if you need to go find a therapist who can help you work through that, do it. Because this is really, nothing else matters if you don't have this. I will just add one thing, it may not be that helpful, but the people who tend to blame others and not take responsibility aren't going to hear us when we're explaining this. So let me just suggest this. Think about your last three assignments that you did poorly on and ask yourself why you did poorly on them and write it down. If the, if the reasons for those three assignments involve anyone other than yourself. So for example, if assignment one was someone else's fault, why you did poorly, assignment two, it was because uh, there was a sub in class that day, that's why you did poorly. Assignment three, it's because- There was, a, there was, there was snow and yeah, I there couldn't was get snow. to school. Um, 
okay, that's that's that should be a red flag, yeah. and you should speak with somebody. It's not easy to change the whole way you perceive your reality. And I know, it's around a, and you. it's a super humbling experience, yeah. and you want to go see someone that you're comfortable with if you if you think this is something that's been really crippling your learning th so far, but. And, and please, if you need a gentle kick in the butt from one of us, email me, carrieann yeah. at vincoprep.com. I have talked hundreds of students through this exact conversation, some more willing than others to hear what I have to say, but we would be more than happy to provide that support to you. Um, or if you want a slightly more brutal evaluation, <laughs> email me, <laughs> <laughs> puyan at vincoprep.com. <laughs> But but in all seriousness, this was a this was a heavier topic that we have. But I can honestly say that this is one of the most important things that uh, one of the most important pieces of advice that I have to give, and I hope that it can help you grow as a law student. Yep. So if you have any questions, email Carrie Ann at vincoprep.com or join us in our Facebook group.